Good morning, everyone. Welcome to uh, Friday here on this day. It is April uh, 26, and uh, nice weather today. I'll tell you about the weather coming up in just a moment. On our show today, Carl Randazzo is here from United, uh, particularly the MNC Committee. is going to tell you about uh, the meeting that they had a couple days ago. Also, we have our good friend, Dan Alweiler of Sterling Financial Advisors. And the topic today is your money safe. And we're going to be talking about different areas where you may be putting your, your money, meaning a simple savings account or a treasury bond. And we're going to look at that and uh, see what's safe, what kind of returns you get in those kind of, kinds of uh, vehicles to use for your money. Now, Villa Valencia, we have our, their, one of their out, uh, outpatient folks here today. We're going to talk about that, uh, outpatient therapy. And El Toro Water District, Mark Monin is here. And really what he's going to be talking about is what not to be flushing down your toilet. All right, there's, there it is. There's no meetings today, so let's get to the weather. Uh, today, a little bit cooler uh, than yesterday. Uh, the fog was out there this morning, although the fog isn't quite as thick. Yesterday, it, was, it, uh, it has a bit higher ceiling today, I should say, than it did the last couple of days. But it's still there, and as you saw the last few days, it gives way to a beautiful day. Uh, we'll be a bit cooler today, uh, about 73. Um, I'm going to say 73 to 75. Uh, there's not as, as thick a layer of fog this morning, so I'm, I'm thinking I might be a little bit warmer uh, than what I put there, but that's what's in the forecast. Drop it down uh, tomorrow a little bit, and a uh, bit more clouds coming on Sunday. Monday, we're still looking at that chance of early rain, and uh, the chance is kind of lessening. It is coming out, coming more from the southwest, so it won't be a cold system by any stretch of the imagination. I'm saying we're probably down to about a 10-15% chance of rain coming in on Monday, probably um, early, early morning, and it shouldn't last long at all if we get it. A little bit uh, cooler than on Tuesday, but then we pop things back up again as we look at uh, next week and the midweek, it's going to be like we had this week. So it'll warm up uh, once again as that high pressure system begins to form. And the way it's forming, it could knock out this any chance of rain on Monday if it comes in a little bit sooner. Let's take a look around the state this weekend. Looking pretty good everywhere you go. I would say though overall we're looking at about a 5 to maybe 10 degrees cooler weekend than what we had last weekend throughout the state. Although, um, you know, in certain areas like Yosemite, I put Yosemite up there this time of the year, it replaces a mammoth. Uh, 71 degrees there, if you're heading up there it's going to be beautiful. Palm Springs, if uh, any of you are thinking uh, you might be going out to Stagecoach, it's going to be in the upper 90s to maybe, I think where Stagecoach is, which is Indio, they're going to be probably three or four degrees warmer than that. So just to let you know, it's going to be hot out there. All right, we'll be back in just a moment. Freedom Village Assisted Living, we provide loving care and support when your loved one needs it most. We believe in laughing more and caring more. Dining will be an experience, not just a meal. We offer opportunities to create new memories. Your family will feel like they're a part of our family as we work toward creating an extraordinary difference in lives worth living. To schedule a tour and complimentary lunch and for more information, please call us at 949-340-8108 or visit our website, freedomvillage.org. Hey Laguna Woods, it's Ken. And Lisa. Did you miss an episode of this day? Not to worry, head over to youtube.com and search Village Television. Here you can find each episode of this day and other community programs such as Good Day OC, Discovering Laguna Woods, and much more. Just click the red subscribe button, then click the bell to be emailed every time we upload a video. Don't miss out. And subscribe today. Get out and live your life with the Buzz Around XL Travel Scooter from Golden. The Buzz Around is fun to drive with a tight indoor turning radius so you can go just about anywhere. It's also so easy to charge and offers all day range so you can go further. The Buzz Around even has more leg and foot room for all day driving comfort. Be safe with the XL's ultra bright LED headlight. Plus the Buzz Around XL can be easily taken apart into several lightweight pieces. See for yourself just how easy and affordable mobility freedom can be. My father was 
A quiet man and honesty was premier uh, prior to his passing. It was emotional. The folks at O'Connor made it easier. They just went over and above and helped me get through this. If you have to go through this process, stop by O'Connor, you will not be disappointed. At O'Connor Mortuary, our commitment is to serve our community with care and compassion. Hi everybody, I'm Sean Thomas. Welcome to Sports Talk. Come join me here every Thursday at 11.30 a.m. for sports highlights, tournament news, and interviews for Laguna Woods residents and around the world. Hey, maybe even Broadway. It's a beautiful day for a ball game. Put it on your calendar. Thursday mornings, a great way to start your day with me and the Sports Talk way. Or even a triple's okay. I'll see you then. Well, uh, the other day, United had their MNC meeting, and Kyle Randazza, who chairs that, is here today. You're going to go over some of the highlights of the meeting, and uh, then we're going to talk about some of these uh, devices that you brought that help determine uh, if you got a leak somewhere. Yeah. And your water heater. Right, exactly. All right. <coughs> Good morning. Good morning. And great being here. Yeah, so uh, uh, the MNC meeting occurred on this past Wednesday on April 24th. Uh, the MNC Committee for United is made up of five directors and three advisors at this particular point in time. We had a good meeting. At the meeting, we reviewed the uh, project log that provides updates on the various major projects that are being performed in the United. We also addressed the possible need for water de leak detection alarms for the hot water heaters, as well as an update from the Solar Task Force chair. We've, we've put together a solar task force to review our solar uh, power plant in the community, uh, and a follow-up review of the drainage issues that we've had in the community, mm -hmm. especially this year, which we had so much rain. Uh, this uh, specific drainage issue, we followed up with a discussion on the area around Gate 1, Sevilla, and, uh, and El Toro. Uh, he showed some uh, photos at that meeting of the various different flooding that you'll, you'll see. He, uh, he was, he's able, he's got a license to fly a drone in the community, so he's got a whole, he had a whole bunch of nice pictures. Okay. Uh, albeit it showed some flooding, and uh, it was pointed us, out to us by, uh, by uh, the MNC uh, uh, manager, uh, Ernesto Munoz, that many of these streets are designed to flood, okay, but some of the flooding sometimes can be a little bit mm -hmm. intense. So as a result of this discussion, we're going to be discussing with the city whether or not the main sewer line that uh, is on El Toro that is able to capture all of this water, because most of that water on Sevilla at that location around the gate actually flows into El Toro, okay. and that's where sometimes we have a large amount of pooling. Uh, with regard to the project log, uh, which is published every month, and it's, in this particular case, there's 20 items on this. This specifically goes into many of the major projects that are being taken care of in the community. And I'll just uh, cover a couple of things that we discussed at the meeting. Uh, Shepherd's Crook fencing, each year we're anticipating uh, upgrading the barbed wire to this Shepherd's Crook fencing, 1,500-foot uh, lengths or thereabouts, mm -hmm. plus or minus. And in this particular year, we're anticipating doing an area along El Toro Road adjacent to the area that we did last year. Okay. And at the end, we'll be uh, uh, doing about 21,000 feet, uh, linear feet of, of fence. So it's, it's a long project. It's not going to take one year. It's, it's a multiple year project because of budgets, because of time restraints and, and what have you. Um, we are continuing to work with our exterior paint program. So each year, each, the buildings is on a rotation of 10 years. So every 10 years, that building gets painted. And right now, we're continuing on that program. Uh, we're continuing on our waistline remediation program. Uh, that's whereby we're putting epoxy in the waistlines to mitigate any failures of the pipes so that they'll have leaks into the, into the uh, units. 
And then uh, we're also looking at common wall replacement. And this is an important point I want to bring to everybody because I, I do a lot of walking around the community. A common wall basically is a, is a block wall that you see that is used to, uh, to terrace certain things mm -hmm. or to basically, uh, where you might have a slope, they put a wall there instead right. and what have you. So in that particular case, uh, the, sometimes they work very well, well and, and they look fine and they last for a long time. But in certain cases, okay, where there's been a lot of water or there's been a lot of heaving as mm -hmm. a result of various different water right. uh, uh, in, the, in the soil itself, you'll see that they're starting to have, get some cracks in the wall. Now, cracks are anticipated because they're block walls mostly. But if you see that there's a block wall, okay, and it seems to be pushing forward, or sort of buckling out, and if mm -hmm. you see that, then we're asking that okay. we're, we do an inspection, yeah. but you know you can't be every place all, all the right. time. There's a lot of places in this community, so if you see any of those particular walls where you think there's some problem, where it looks like it may be anticipating falling down, mm -hmm. I mean it's not going to fall down, but you know you you get that feeling, then uh, take a picture of it and notify resident services that you found that particular wall whereby there might be a, an accident waiting to happen. It will be inspected and it'll probably be okay, but it's better to be safe than sorry. Right, okay. So that's one of the other things that we uh, reviewed. Now, as I previously stated, we did discuss water leak detection and water leak detection alarms. And we originally had uh, looked at water leak detection last year with regard to possibly putting some water leak detection alarms under the sink. But people uh, were indicating that, that we don't have that many leaks under the sink and, and into the sinks and in the bathrooms or what have you, and this would just be a waste of money. And then if people heard the alarm, what would you do mm -hmm. and what have you? So we sort of tabled that, but then it got resurrected by a, a resident, and we looked at it strictly now from the perspective of possibly using it in, for the hot water heaters, because we've okay. had a couple of leaks in hot water heaters uh, over the last years. So is that something that we want to address? And uh, mm -hmm. as a result of this discussion, we are going to be looking at the, the need for it. But because of the fact that we don't have that many leaks, a lot of people are saying, well, probably there's not a lead, uh, need. Excuse me. So first, let me say that hot water heaters in United, as long as they've been relo not relocated or modified by the residents, are the responsibility of United. And if they are our water heaters, they are changed out every 10 years. So if you look at the photo there, mm -hmm. in the photo there on the wall, right. you'll see what I have installed on my hot water heater. That happens to be my hot water heater. It's in okay. an enclosure. And you'll see at the bottom of that hot water heater, there's what they call a pan. And that pan is there to catch any leakage from that hot water heater. Now, if most of the time, if they, if they fail, they fail with some corrosion that causes leakage into right. that, that pan. But sometimes they fail catastrophically. It doesn't happen very often, but it does happen on occasion. And since those pans, uh, since that hot water heater can be under the pressure of 60 to 100 pounds from the, from the municipality, mm -hmm. okay, that's a lot of pressure. So as a result of that, instead of just leaking out into the pan, it might just spray out into the wall, okay, and then cause some other issues. But as long as it goes into the pan, then what we were thinking of, what I've done, is I have purchased a hot water, uh, excuse me, a, a water alarm device. As you can see, it's the white thing on the wall, right. and there's a cable that goes down to a sensor in the bottom of the pan. If that sensor sees any water in that pan, it alarms. And this alarm, a lot of people are saying, oh, these alarms are tinny. They don't really make that much of noise. This one here, right. it makes a lot of yeah, noise. It I, does. I like this one, and I purchased this one. And I purchased this one uh, because I'm uh, anal retentive. And I'm an engineer by trade, so I always like to be safe than sorry. It does, I have to say though, it does sound like a smoke alarm. Yeah. So somebody in the middle of the night, they're gonna be thinking first, the smoke alarm's yeah. going off. And the thing yeah. right now is maybe, but at least they'll be checking other right. things, okay. okay? 
So the thing right now is uh, this one is the one that I purchased. Right. Okay, there are others. Um, there are others that are self-contained. These you can replace the battery. Right. These you cannot replace the battery. And these are the other types that are available. These are a lot cheaper. Yeah. This one in Home Depot is twelve fifty, is fourteen fifty. Okay, and, and on Amazon is twelve fifty. I'm not. I don't have any stocks in this company, so I'm not <laughs> looking to. <laughs> I'm not yeah. looking to sell these right. things. I just happened to do some research, and I decided to buy this yeah. one. And uh, on this one here, since there's a nine volt battery, I usually put a little tag on the thing, tell me when I need to change out the battery. That's as frenetic as I am. Okay. <clears throat> so, but on it, anyway, so that, that's where the installation is of the alarm. Now, the thing right now is, okay, let's say for instance, you have this alarm and you buy this device and then all of a sudden you hear the alarm go off and then you open the door to your cabinet where your hot water heater happens to be and you see water in there and you say, okay, what now? Well, now the next thing is the important part whereby there's another photo that it shows that there is a valve right. in the line. Now, in my case, the valve is located above the hot water heater. Mm -hmm. Not everybody's is the same, okay? And you'll see that that valve over there, the, the photo that's on the, uh, on the right hand side, mm -hmm. that's the valve. It's called a quarter turn ball valve, very easy valve. It's not anything that you rotate. If you have arthritis, you say, oh, I can't grab onto the valve. This one here, you can just get with the palm of your hand. And it, as you see it there, it is in parallel. The handle of yes. it, which is blue, mm -hmm. is in parallel to the pipe. And when it's closed, it's perpendicular to the pipe. So, and it only goes one quarter turn. So you grab it, or you don't even have to grab it if you have problems with your hands, and you just push it. And when you push it, it will, it will right. close in a quarter of a turn, and that relieves the pressure that's going to the hot water heater. And as I said, the hot water heater can be under yeah. 60 to 100 mm -hmm. pounds. Now, in many instances, that's not going to stop the flow of water, but it's not going to have the pressure there anymore because the pressure will dissipate as a result of the leak. Right. So we wanted to make people aware of the fact that there is that valve there. Now, in, in, uh, in California, the, the code requires my pan, which uh, we showed in a previous uh, uh, photo, right. has a access to the outside. So as a result of that, when water does go into the pan, it will then flow out through a little drain line that's in the side of the pan mm -hmm. and go out to the street and flow out the door. So right. hopefully we won't have much water damage, if any. Some of the pans, however, do not have access, like some of these units, whereby you're not close to an outside location. Right. So as a result of that, the pan is self-contained. If it's self-contained, that means there's no drain line going to it, which means that it'll just fill up. And what they do in that particular case, California Code requires that we install an automatic valve in addition to the manual valve. Okay. So when the sensor, like you see there for, the, for my mm -hmm. alarm, this sensor is attached to that valve, the automatic valve on the mm -hmm. self-contained units, it will automatically shut that valve. Again, that valve now shut and prevents the water main pressure from continuing to be in the unit, mm -hmm. but there's still remaining pressure in there as a result of the fact that there was water in there, plus there's the gravity, so if you have a leak on the bottom of your water heater, then you still have the contents of that hot water heater. Right. So the best thing to do, let's say, let's say in conclusion, the best thing to do is if you have if you have an alarm and you hear the alarm, open the door, close the valve. Uh, if you have one that's self-contained, the valve should already be closed. I would in anticipate and I'd close the other valve also because you have usually a manual valve with an right. automatic valve. But then the next thing to do would be to call resident services and see that you have, say that you have water in your pan. Uh, and this that's is whether or not you see an alarm, you have an alarm, or you don't have an alarm, because at this particular point in time, the fact that you have water in your pan means that there's a problem. Right. 
And that means the first thing that I would do is shut that valve and call resident services and say you have a leak in your hot water. Okay. And that's uh, the show and tell for today. All and right. If anybody has any questions, contact the MNC committee. Uh, but at this particular point in time, I think it's rather simple. Uh, but, you know, I, I've been an engineer for 45 years, so uh, you know, that's the way I think. So. Yes. <laughs> All right. Very good. And these are available yeah. at home centers, Home Depot, that's and correct. such. And right. Exactly. The, uh, the main one you have here is about $15. So obviously the other ones are a lot less. Oh, yeah. The other ones are definitely a lot less. And they have a self-contained battery. So um, Right. And by the way, this one is really easy to install. You can either put a command strip on the back side and just put it on mm -hmm. your wall, or you can just hang it like a picture. Okay. So, and then you st stick that in the pan, you're done. You're done. Very good. Thank you, Carl. You're welcome. Appreciate it. You take care of yourself, care. and we'll be right back. Okay. Welcome to the Invitation to Lexus sales event at South County Lexus. As our guest, you'll find a different customer experience. And a remarkable selection of luxury, craftsmanship, and performance, all with exceptional values. Whether you prefer to lease or finance, we have your best interests in mind. You're invited to discover an extraordinary buying and ownership experience. At South County Lexus, different is amazing. Hi, I'm Brian Rott, President and CEO of Cartmart here in Laguna Woods. My family's been in the golf cart business since 1959 and we win our customers over with the simple belief of, we treat you right. We are proud to be the authorized dealer for Club Cart here in Orange County and your go-to source for the sales and service to other major brands. We're conveniently located on El Toro Road, just minutes from Laguna Woods. So come by and see for yourself while when doing business with Cartmart, there's no reason to go anywhere else. You may know AgeWell for delivering life-saving Meals on Wheels to homebound seniors, but did you know they keep seniors active and engaged at 10 modern centers? Serve nutritious congregate meals amid friendly surroundings, transport seniors safely to and from appointments, and provide much-needed equipment and other essential services. Now this vital nonprofit organization needs your support to sustain its mission. This is AgeWell Senior Services. Won't you make it yours? I started Sterling Financial under the premise that there was a need for integrity in this industry as well as quality service. There's such volatility in the stock market. They, you know, one day it could be up 100 points, the next day it could be down 500 points. Well, what we like to do is be able to have people go to bed and wake up the next morning knowing that their money is safe and secure. That's what we try to do here at Sterling Financial Advisors is to create peace of mind and quality of life in retirement. Welcome back. Dan Oweiler was with, with me today. Good to see you again. Good to see you, Sterling Financial Advisors. And today we're talking about how safe is your safe money? Safe money. Yes. <laughs> so explain that. Well, everybody has a different opinion as to what is safe. Mm -hmm. You know, obviously, uh, uh, I have people come into our office and they'll say, well, I'm, I think I'm pretty safe. I'm well diversified. I have... Yeah. 10 different mutual funds. Mm -hmm. Well, diversification isn't having just 10 different mutual funds. It's the type of mutual fund or mm -hmm. the type of things. That, you know, I had somebody in yesterday that says, well, I think I'm okay because I'm in what they call a target date fund. And a target date fund says, 
that tell us when you're going to retire and we'll start shifting the risk from oh, okay. growth stocks to more bonds and things like that. Interesting. Well, yeah. it, so it, it, everybody has a different opinion. Interestingly mm -hmm. enough, I was doing some research a while back and I found uh, that target date funds back in 2008, right. when we had the big yeah. stock market crash, yeah. uh, ranged anywhere from a minus 3% all the way up to a minus 44%. Wow. So depending upon when yeah. you're retiring, right? It'll be but safe money is always a different opinion to everybody. Right. You know, everybody think, well, I'm going to have safe money. I'm going to go put it in the bank. Mm -hmm. You can do that. Right. The problem with it is, is you're not earning anything. Yes, and and that's that's the <laughs> the rub in all this. It's not like what we've talked about many many times years and years ago, where your safe money and a, a CD, which is one of the first ones on your list here. And I can remember at one time they were earning 10, 12 percent. That yeah. was really safe money and the, great returns. The unfortunate thing yeah. about when we were earning uh, eight or 10 percent on our CDs, inflation was seven percent. That's right. Yeah. You know, so it's a kind of the mm -hmm. catch-22 yeah. situation. Yeah. When we have high interest rates, generally we have high, higher inflation and things mm -hmm. along that line. And so. Um, we can go into CDs, but we're just not making anything. More, most of the time, major wirehouses, the Merrill Lynch's, the TD Ameritrade's, or whatever, you know, Charles Schwab, their answer to safe or risk is moving from stocks to bonds. Mm -hmm. That's their yeah, answer. Right, right. And unfortunately, in a low interest rate environment, the odds are interest rates are going to probably, hopefully, if you're a saver, start going up. I've, mm -hmm. I've mentioned in my seminars before, we kind of have this conflict in society between the spenders and the savers. Yeah, exactly. Spenders want low interest rates. Mm -hmm. I want a low mortgage, a low car interest, you know, those yeah. type of things. Yeah. And so anytime you're a spender, you want low interest rates. If you're a saver, you want high interest now, rates. Now, Dan, I've known you for a long time. This is something <laughs> that you need to create in this, you know, where we can have yeah. low interest rates when you buy something, right. high interest rates. Uh, yeah. Can you do that? Yeah, I have. You, <laughs> you know the, your crystal ball? You know <laughs> those ticket tapers that you have at the post office yeah. next in line? Yes. I could have that at my office yeah. if I could be able to get, uh, yeah. you know, that yeah. kind of a product. You know, That would be great. It's unfortunate. Yeah. but. Yeah. You know, for me and, and how we work with people, there's really three areas that we look at It's safe money. It's, mm -hmm. it's bank accounts, uh, CDs, money market accounts. That's what we call cash equivalents, right. okay? Then there are uh, treasuries, okay? Or yeah. treasury notes or treasury uh, bills or treasury bonds. Mm -hmm. The difference between those, the treasury bill, treasury notes, and treasury bonds is just the length of the term. Right. So you can go into those, but those are again aren't paying very much because right. they're so secure. Yeah. And then you have the guaranteed insurance products, mm -hmm. uh, fixed annuities or something, you know, life insurance or those types of things where your principal is guaranteed. So as far as safe money is concerned, yeah, bonds tend to be more conservative, mm -hmm. but they're still exposed to market risk if interest rates go up. Right. And so if we're sitting in a low interest rate environment and people are saying, well, go into bonds mm -hmm. to protect yourself, the problem is, is when interest rates start going up, the value of our mutual fund bond or bond mutual funds start to go down. And so right. you can be exposed. We kind of put bonds in a moderate risk mm -hmm. category yeah. rather than safe category because there is some market volatility there. Now let me ask you a question just, just in general. If someone were to directly invest in a bond mm -hmm. um, for a company. Okay. A corporate bond yeah, or whatever. Yeah, corporate bond. Yes, the interest rate part. Uh, mm -hmm. If you wanted to uh, sell that bond before its maturity. Market value. The market value. However, if you kept that bond to maturity, you know for, your, your principal is safe. Your principal is safe right. as long as the company is good and everything. And you'll be getting that interest, whatever you'll was You'll be getting guaranteed. the interest. Right. So, what, what, what affects yeah. it is the market value right. on the bond. Yeah. Just like a stock, you yeah. know, if you hold on to the stock and it comes back, well, it's, everything's okay. Unfortunately, our time frame for in, in our retirement years becomes different. Yeah, How we invest yeah. our money at age 
45 is different than how we invested at age 70 or 75. Right. Or right. at least it should be. Yes. And so <laughs> a lot of times uh, we'll sit down and in my opinion of what safe or conservative is, is many times different than what the person's mm -hmm. definition is. Right. And so our, our challenge is let's quantify what is safe and what is conservative to you mm -hmm. as opposed to what I think it should be. Right. Now we can give input and in, in things along that line and, and we have programs where we can go in and determine kind of what your risk tolerance is. Yeah. Okay. Are, are you willing to risk this much of your money in order to gain this much money and those are the types of things and, mm -hmm. and we can kind of focus in on what it really is meant to you as far yeah. as risk tolerance. And so they kind of define what their risk tolerance is, not me. And so as we do that, then we try to structure a portfolio around that risk tolerance rather than me saying, well, this is what you should be. Right. And it, it depends if, you know, again, you've, you've said this many times, you know, you want to sleep at night, you want to, right. and those who want to sleep at night, so to speak, probably are going to be earning less. Well, the problem is, is, is many times, I mentioned in our seminars that people become married to their tools, right. you know, whatever, whatever yeah. investments they have. I've had these mutual funds. I've been in the stock market for the last 30 years. Mm -hmm. You know, it's always treating me well. Yeah, it goes down, but it always comes back up. Yeah. Well, that's because we were working. You yeah. know, we yeah. were age 40 <laughs> and we had 25 years before we were going to retire. Sometimes we don't have that time frame to make it back up. Yeah. And so, you know, many times, not always, but many times we find that whether or not people make four or five percent on their money doesn't mm -hmm. change their lifestyle if they make eight or ten. Right, right. And if it's not going to change your lifestyle, why do we risk it? Right, right. And the reason we risk it is because our greed button gets stuck. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I mean, if I can make eight or ten, yeah, but you can all also lose eight or ten or right. twenty or whatever right. it is. And so, defining what safe money is 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 narrow. I mean, I have people, you know, protect my money, Dan, and give me eight mm -hmm. percent. I'd have people lined out the door if I could do that. Right. I I heard uh, coming down the driving down to the the studio today, you know about a real estate investment. If you're not getting 18 to 20 percent on your money, right. uh, you know, you need to call us. Yeah. yeah. Well, if you're going to get 18 to 20 percent, you don't get that without risk. Right. You know, and oh, it's secured by, you know, commercial real estate and everything and else. And it all sounds good. Yeah. Yeah. But they're not talking about the risk of that. Yes. In order to do that. And I, at least when I hear those, and I, you probably listen to the same one I do or right. I've heard because they go, well, these are secured in Hoboken, New Jersey properties. Am I right? Exactly. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even go and see it. You know, what is it, a dirt lot? I don't right. know what it is. And yeah. when you see these properties, you'll wonder why you haven't invested yes. sooner. Yeah. You know, right. I mean, I, I tongue in cheek, but you know, there's, you can't get an 18% return without risk. Right. You right. know, and so the, the key is, is designing a portfolio structured around your risk tolerance and making yeah. sure that we have an emergency fund that you can tap in case something happens. And so setting up safe money, is my, money, if my, right. is my safe money safe? Well, there's three basic things, the treasuries, the guaranteed insurance products and cash equivalents. Mm -hmm. Those monies are safe. Yes. Now people will say, well, I can buy a piece of real estate. Yeah, you can, as long as you have a renter, yeah. you know, if you buy it for all cash, that's okay. There's some things that always come into play. Right. Okay. Right. But it's a matter of designing a plan that's going to allow you to sleep at night, like I said. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And safe money always lets people sleep at night. That's true. I have people have come in and say, Dan, I have four or five thousand or five hundred thousand dollars in CDs. Why do you have so much in CDs? Well, Dan. <laughs> I really don't care how much money I make. I just can't afford to what? Right. Lose that money. Yeah. 
Yeah. And so their goal is not losing money. Right. I right. can afford the one to two percent that I'm making in the bank. I just can't afford to lose it. Yeah. That's okay, but yeah. there's other options that we can do for safe money. Right. If if that fits to give them a little bit more. Exactly. Exactly. All right. So I like the, the yeah good discussion. I yeah. like that. Uh, I know you're having a, you're doing seminars right now. We have our seminar system or series going right now. If they want to call the office, we can get them into one of our seminars. I, we have one uh, next week, I think on the first, and then on the sixth. Okay. I think. So the number so, is eight five nine eight right. five nine. Eight nine zero zero. Eight nine zero zero. Right. <laughs> Look, even though I, I pretty much know that, <laughs> um, SterlingFA.com. You can go there as well and get information. And uh, you know, as Dan always says, you're welcome to come there. Uh, there's no charge for somebody to come yeah, in the first time and talk to you and somebody see. Somebody just want to call in and, yeah. and uh, sit down and say, hey, uh, I've got some questions about my portfolio, or yeah. can you help me? There's no charge for that. And. and uh, we don't even know if we can help them or not, but we can certainly give them an okay. opportunity. And when Dan comes up with that formula <laughs> of uh, keeping your credit card interest low, yeah, but right. your savings high, then yeah, we'll let you know. Right. right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Good to Take see you. Take care. Good to see you. We'll be right back. <laughs> Hi, I'm John Bowser Bauman. You probably know me best as Bowser from Shanana, but I'm also president of Social Security Works PAC. And you know, when I'm in Laguna Woods, I always watch Village Television. Grease for peace. Breast cancer takes patients down paths they never expected, and Memorial Care Comprehensive Breast Center at Saddleback can help navigate the way. We provide multidisciplinary breast care services for the early detection, diagnosis, and treatment of breast cancer using state-of-the-art technology in a personalized environment designed to meet the needs of each woman. I'm Dr. Leif Loberg, and I want to welcome you to our brand new facility here in Laguna Woods. We've been serving the community since 2006, and we're super excited to bring you an awesome team of doctors, Dr. Jackson, Dr. Ossetorians, Dr. Vian, and myself, uh, here to serve you in our brand new state-of-the-art facility. Call us in the morning, and we'll get you in the same day, guaranteed. I choose to make friends out of neighbors. I choose to start a new chapter. I choose to live an active lifestyle. Choose to experience the good life at Villa Valencia. Call or visit us today. Welcome back. Well, we have Charlene Herrera here today. And Charlene works for Agility Physical Therapy Solutions, which is uh, all part of Villa Valencia, part of the, um, the five-star system that uh, oversees Villa Valencia. And uh, your main focus there is to help, uh, you're an outpatient rehab director. Yes. And uh, you help uh, the folks there who are kind of transitioning, right? Yeah, so um, I'm, I'm the rehab director there, so we offer um, occupational physical therapy and speech therapy. So we uh, cater to the residents at Via Valencia, uh, the independent living and mm -hmm. the assisted living. Um, and so uh, those individuals, whether it's, we get referrals right. uh, from, from people who will say, hey, can you come visit uh, Mrs. Jones or, yeah. or somebody. So that's how we uh, we just cater to the residents there at Via Valencia. So uh, when it comes to you know I know the different residents that are there and that you have the independent living, and then all the assisted living and sometimes the assisted living patients are people who 
may only be there a, a set amount of time. Maybe they just got out of the hospital. They might be there for a few weeks or a couple months. Or that they may be there. It's pretty much their permanent residence. So in some cases, you may work with people to help them get through that point in their life. That's right. We, if they're on a, a respite, stay yeah. you know respite we, that's the word i'm trying <laughs> to think about yeah so if they're on a respite stay you know and they do need uh, assistance because they do want to get back to their home mm -hmm. that's where we could also help out and get them back to their function whatever their goals are um, if they are actually permanently living in an assisted living and then we would also be working with them until right. they meet their goals because they want to be able to you know be independent as possible yeah while living there now the independent folks that uh, live there uh, they may have something temporarily that you're going to help with. Uh, maybe they broke an ankle or whatever it might be or something that maybe not, may not have um, a long-term disability, but it could be a short-term and you've got to get them back going on their feet again. Exactly. So, and it could, like I said, the falls are the number one yes. <laughs> reason. Right. Um, but we want to see these individuals before they have a fall. So yeah. maybe there uh, could be some balance difficulties that you know they have, and we want to mm -hmm. see them. Um, we could do assessments and screens, um, and just to make sure that they're safe in their home right. wh while they're doing the things that they love to do. And also, uh, of course, we, could, we would also get, sometimes there's an order from a doctor and they need to do outpatient therapy because they just had a, a hip replacement okay. or a shoulder replacement, any type of orthopedic injury. Okay. So. Now, I see here, on, in addition, you can also have a personal fitness training as well. Yeah, so we do offer the personal fitness training as a private pay program. Right. And it's... Uh, catered to the individuals who have been on service before with physical therapy, mm -hmm. occupational therapy, speech, who want to continue their program. Okay. So they've met their goals uh, with the therapy and they, they want to keep up the maintenance of what they've learned mm -hmm. so, so they could, we could work with them on a private pay basis and, okay. it's, and it's up to them on how they want to do it, if they want to do it two times a week, three times a week. Um, so we set goals with them as so well. So it's done with them there? Yes. At, in, in their room or in some uh, yeah, equipment that might be there as well? Exactly. We could, okay. we could work in our clinic or we can work in the rooms. Okay. Now, what, what about, um, you know, it's a big adjustment for people moving, uh, especially to assisted living. And, uh, you know, it can be very disconcerting to them. But this is a, this is a point where you can get with them and, and then assess. Maybe this is just a temporary thing. So do you have folks that go from independent living there, all within Villa Valencia, to assisted living with the goal of getting them back to independent living? Um, we, we do have individuals that do transfer from independent living to assisted living. Okay. Um, but we would rather have them stay in independent living if that's right. what their goal is. So that's why we do screens. Okay. And All right. we can spend time with them to see what they need in order to be able to stay in independent living mm -hmm. and work with them that way. Okay. Now the screens that you do, is this for just about any of the resident there or is there a specific uh, point where you're called in to come in and evaluate? We can, I would like to do it uh, when maybe the resident first moves in. Okay. And, and see if there's anything that they need. Um, do a home safety evaluation. Right. If there's any adaptive equipment that they may need, I could, we could suggest. Um, so we like to do that. And then if there's uh, a referral, somebody mentions something to me where, oh, can you go take a look at this resident? And then I would be happy to do that as well. Okay. So. Yeah, I know keeping them safe to start is, is the goal. Yes. And you work with um, other facilities around the area if they need something very specific that may not be there? Um, like take them somewhere for certain kinds of physical therapy? No, we have our own clinic okay. right there at Via Valencia. Okay. So uh, we're able to service the residents there. We don't have to, they don't have, what's nice is they don't have to go outside somewhere. of the facility. All right. They could stay right there in the building. All right, very good. Well, uh, great to have you on today. I appreciate it and all the good work that they do there. And uh, the numbers on the screen, the main number for Villa Valencia, it's 949-5816-111, villavalenciaretirement.com. So if you, uh, you'd like to give them a call, maybe you're interested, maybe you want to uh, uh, go into independent living over there and see what they're like, uh, you can always call them and 
get a tour over there. Maybe you'll meet Charlene as well. Thank you very much for coming on. Right. I appreciate it, and Thank we'll you. be right back. David's in jail? Where? Here in San Antonio, ma'am. I'm David's lawyer, and I'm trying to get him out of jail. Well, what do you need me to do? Why, $700, or better yet, send me a credit card number, and I'll get him out of jail immediately. When in doubt, hang up. Scammers will find family facts for an emotional effect. Oh, can I talk to him? I'm sorry, ma'am. He's in jail. If you want to get him out, you got to get me $700 immediately. If at all in doubt, hang up. It could save you from financial ruin. If you asked me what I wanted to be when I was a child, I would have told you a princess or an astronaut, maybe even a chef. But things change. I may not have become a princess, but I found someone who treated me like one. I may not have become an astronaut, but I still got to see the world. I may not have become a chef, but you would never leave my house hungry. The Emeritus Institute has kept my love of learning alive. Every day is a new adventure, and the Emeritus classes have made it possible to keep living out my dreams. Sign up today and begin your life's next adventure. Mind and Memory Program at Mission Hospital is an outpatient program specifically designed for patients with a memory disorder who have developed a mental health issue, such as depression, anxiety, or paranoia. Patients are welcome every day, Monday through Friday, up to four days a week. On-site meals and snacks are included, and transportation to and from the program is available. The program focuses on improvement in overall mood, function, and concentration, as well as a decrease in depression or anxiety. Call today to find out if you or your loved one qualifies for the Mind and Memory program. Hi, it's Desiree from Irvine Subaru, where families come first. As a family-ran dealership, your family's safety is our number one priority. Come in and find the perfect Subaru from the largest selection of Subarus in Orange County. All models are top safety picks by the Insurance Institute of Highway Safety. We offer the ideal balance of safety, performance, and economy. Irvine Subaru, more Subarus, more safety, more performance, more love. Well, from the El Toro Water District, we have Mark Monini here today, and Mark is the Vice President on their Board of Directors. Welcome back. Good to see Good you, to sir. Good to see you, Ken. And today we're going to, well, talk about pretty much what not to put down your drains, Correct. whether it's your uh, kitchen sink or your toilet or whatever it might be. Those are probably the two big ones. Though. Big part of yeah. uh, El Toro is not just water, it's sewer. Right, so it is sewer, yes. We have some pictures that are kind of graphic, so. All right. Uh, and <laughs> so we're gonna show those, that, you know, the first one here is a term called fog. And this is something that, um, you know, for I think for, for years and years ago, people used to put down their uh, their sink and hopefully they don't do this anymore because it will cause problems for right. themselves but fats oil and grease right right now I'm a pilot and I fly in fog but this is a different right. type of fog okay fats oil and grease yeah and uh, I, I'm hoping that people don't do this much anymore I hope so I think people are we really we needed our uh, customers to do well in the drought which they did so we need them to help us out on this right. topic also. Now, some may still get down the sink, and this is where, you know, again, I don't think people take all their oil and, and purposely down there, no. but sometimes you're cleaning a pan and do that. And, right. You know, if you can, maybe you've, you know, you've fried some bacon and you kept the, put the bacon grease, because bacon grease is great for cooking, right? But, um, you know, I, what I usually try and do is there a little bit left is wipe it out with a paper towel. That's what put I do. In, yeah. And then I'll clean the pan Perfect. however I choose to do Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Anything you can do to make sure that doesn't get down is, because uh, yeah. when it cools, then you see how nasty it is. And that's what And happens. that's what the next slide yeah. is. And not only is it like that, but it turns into this sludge, right? Yeah. Uh, over time, it really gets worse and worse. And that's uh, a big cost at the department is cleaning these things out when they get filled up. So right. Everything they can do, we really appreciate it. Yeah, and um, uh, you know, it, with this hap what happens in things like this, and it, it causes uh, you know, staff time for, for you folks, money, which in turn goes back in some form or another back to the people who are Right. Your monthly bill. So the yeah. better they can do on that, the more we can provide other services for them. Okay. 
Now on the next slide, it, this is your sewer collection system and this is you know routine ma maintenance that you folks do uh, on a certain cycle. Right. So we do hydro cleaning and that's a very expensive piece of equipment. We do hydro cleaning every two years, high frequency cleaning. Uh, then we do video inspections every five years on different locations and then roots. Believe it or not, oh, yeah. the older a system is, they get right. into everything. So we got to maintain the roots and then the typical manhole and uh, mainline lateral repairs. Right. And uh, that, again, is it's something that you do on a routine basis. And so what you guys want to avoid is something that you have to go out uh, because it's it's an emergency problem. Yeah, and now this will like cause this. you problems in your own location yeah. too. So yeah. it causes you low problems and us low problems. So please do your best. Now this yeah. is some of the inspections that you do. Uh, obviously one of the big ones are restaurants. And Correct. You know, we don't have to worry about that too much here. Right. But I, I know in general, um, you know, restaurants have grease traps, but sometimes that fails or it gets in the, and that's what causes huge Yeah, we problems. do our best on educating them and they've been uh, very accommodating in, in working with us on that. Right, and yeah. I, obviously there's certain codes that they need to Correct. follow. Correct, they do, all. very strict. Now, yeah. here's something that, um, now we're gonna move on to the toilet area. Yeah. And this is something that I, I know you've talked about and you folks have talked about over the years, flushable wipes and how do they even come up with saying these are flushable when they really, I mean, yes, they flush down, yeah. but they don't dissipate. Yeah, they don't. They don't dissipate like toilet paper does. Right. And uh, they're a real problem, and uh, every type of wipe really causes us a lot of problems. And, and then when it's there, it grabs more grease and other things, and it just compounds mm -hmm. on itself. So the wipes are very important that you don't flush them down. Yeah, and this would be the same for like baby wipes and Correct. those kind of Every things. Every kind of wipe is made of a material that's strong and it just doesn't okay. dissolve. It doesn't yeah, it, it, again, it's interesting how they get away with calling call, I don't know. Calling that, I just but. wish that wouldn't be. But. Yeah, they have to change that around. Now, um, again, how they impact, well, it's basically like putting, you know. It's like putting a filter or something yeah. that's going to grab other things down yeah. in there. And uh, it's not a pleasant thing for our staff to no. have to clean those No, out, not so. at all. So, uh, you know, the bottom line here is uh, what not to put down your drains. Right. And, um, and what not to flush. And what not to flush. Mm -hmm. And, you know, again, I think, people, I think people are pretty good, I would hope, with the grease and all that. But the flushable wipes and things like that. Yeah, it says flushable. Uh, it says flushable. What think? else are, yeah, people are going to think. Right. So. Uh, that's something to really keep in mind, and it, and it it can cause not just problems where uh, you are, meaning the folks live in that immediately sewer, that immediate sewer line. But it's all the way down. It's all the, the line. way down the line. Right, right. Now, when you guys do this maintenance on a uh, monthly basis or yearly, 24 month, uh, whatever it might be, uh, that's the routine that you hope. To keep without going out, and it the doesn't. Time. There are bends, and you know that that right. collect more in a system. So those are the ones we show up more, and uh, sometimes it's at two in the morning. So yeah. that can be a real problem. Yes. So do everything you can, and and being uh, knowledgeable on what goes in the system. Now, if people want information on the website, is going to have they can find out what not absolutely. to put down and, and things like that. Yeah, if it's something that doesn't look like it can dissolve, then just don't flush it or don't put it down the sink. Okay, what about um, uh, other things like, uh, I don't know, that people have, do you have problems like with soap and things like that? Not generally, that okay. usually isn't a problem. Okay. Um, you know, it's just things that you don't think would break down. Okay. You know, uh, those are the things that, you know, really avoid. Now, years ago, people would put down their disposal in the kitchen. Uh, it was very common to put eggshells and coffee grounds yeah. and things like that. Uh, you don't want that either. No, no, and people are picking up composting, and that really helps if you keep that, you know, the eggshells and coffee grinds, keep those things out of the Yeah, area. those are great for composting. Because yeah. yeah. it'll just plug up your local area, and then it's uh, a problem for us downstream. Yeah, so keep, you know, uh, when it comes to composting, uh, coffee grounds used to be, I don't know if you still can do this, you could go to Starbucks and they would give you coffee grounds, mm -hmm, which mm -hmm. are acidic and 
if you're growing something like azaleas or blueberries or something like that, they love that. So if you're doing that in a pot and you put like a handful of coffee grounds in there, every so often it acts like a fertilizer. Yeah. People have there picked you that go. up, and uh, it's been better on the system. Yeah, and if not you putting love in. coffee, the smell of coffee in your garden. I love coffee. It's kind of nice. All right, Mark, good to see you. And um, I, I think you might stay here for a minute, because we're just about ending the show. Do you guys uh, want me just to go, or are you going to take a break? Go ahead. Go ahead. All right, so why don't you sit with this okay. here, and we're going to tell folks about uh, the movie that is going on today. It's called uh, What They Had, and this stars Gwyneth, uh, excuse me, not, I was gonna say Gwyneth Paltrow. It stars her mother, <laughs> Blythe Danner. And it also stars um, Hilary Swank and Michael Shannon. And this is about uh, really dealing with uh, the, the mom, played by Blythe Danner, wandles off in a blizzard and it gets lost. And it's really about how she is going through the early stages of uh, uh, memory care and dementia and how the family kind of deals with it, the di different family members. This is on today, it'll be at two o'clock, and at seven o'clock, uh, what they had came out uh, last year. It's about 141 minutes, and it's rated R mainly for um, content, meaning uh, language, and not much uh, beyond that. On a Monday, this one's a little rated R for more of a different reason, uh, a classic movie, uh, Bob, Carol, Ted, and Alice, this came out all the way back in 1970. And this was, uh, Mike Mazurki was the uh, director on this who went on to do Down and Out in Beverly Hills and all kinds of uh, famous movies. Young Natalie Wood there. And uh, also Robert Culp was in this, Elodie Gold and Diane Cannon. And that will be on Monday at two o'clock and at six o'clock. All right, uh, you have a great weekend. You have a great weekend, Mark, all right? Nice weather, right? Keep your drains safe and uh, unclogged, right? That's the message. Thank you. We'll see you, and we'll see you on Monday.